Hey everyone, now let's talk about the three major mechanisms of horizontal gene transfer that occur um, naturally in bacteria. So the first is called transformation, where we transfer DNA as naked DNA from one cell to another cell. Typically, um, this occurs when one cell in a population dies and the DNA leaks out and another cell takes in that DNA. Transduction then is transfer of bacterial DNA using a bacteriophage, which is a virus. And then conjugation is transfer of DNA from one cell to another cell in the same generation using a sex pilus. There we go. So Frederick Griffith is the one who observed the um, changes in organisms um, as a result of transformation. So this occurred in 1928. He was looking at, um, so, and there's the definition, transfer of DNA from one cell to another as DNA that is naked in a solution. And so what he was looking at, he was looking at um, different forms of streptococcus. Um, some of the streptococcus was smooth or encapsulated, and some of the streptococcus was rough or non-encapsulated, okay? And so he noticed that if he infected um, rodents with the smooth streptococcus, they would get sick and they would die. But if he infected um, other, other rodents, so same type of mice, with the non-encapsulated streptococcus, um, those, those did not seem to cause infection. And he thought, okay, so the bacteria themselves aren't causing infection, so maybe the capsule is what causes the infection. And so he thought, well, maybe if I kill the bacteria and I just give them the capsule, they'll still get sick because the capsule must have the pathogen, like the pathogenicity or the toxicity. So he infected bacteria, um, mice with the heat-killed encapsulated cells and Again, the mice did not die. He thought, okay. So then he thought, okay, if I take the heat-killed encapsulated cells and rough cells that are not killed, so both of the strains that didn't cause death, what will happen? Because now you have the living cell that but instead of the living cell being inside of the capsule, they're just on the outside. And um, the mouse died. So when he um, looked at the blood of the cells, or the blood of the, of the mice here, he found living encapsulated cells. Here he didn't find anything, here he didn't find anything, and here he found living encapsulated cells. And he thought, I didn't have encapsulated cells initially, so something transformed these cells into encapsulated cells, and he called that transformation. So when transformation occurs, the cell must be competent. A competent cell is one that can take up DNA. Not all cells are naturally competent. An example is E. coli are not competent naturally. We can make them competent, competent, competent by um, shocking the solution that they're in, which then breaks their cell wall just slightly enough to where they can then take in DNA. It doesn't mean that they will take in DNA, but they could. The process of transformation is highly regu regulated in cells. Um, Bacillus subtilis uses two different regulatory um, processes to control transformation. The first is they look at the nutrient level in the environment. So low nutrient levels mean that they're going to try to become more competent, take in more information so they can potentially survive. The other is they look at how 
concentrated the number of cells are using quorum sensing. So if there's a high concentration of cells, only a fraction of the population will become competent at any given time. The next um, process is transduction. So this is the transfer of DNA from one cell to another using bacterial virus or bacteriophage. Um, so here we're looking at generalized transduction um, where a bacteriophage infects a cell. It utilizes the cell's machinery to produce copies of itself. In doing so, it cuts up the bacterial DNA. And then when it produces new copies of itself, sometimes the bacterial DNA is taken in instead of the viral DNA. And so here we have a lot of virus um, cells, bacterial pages, that have viral DNA, but here's one that took in um, some bacterial DNA. So if that bacteriophage with the bacterial DNA infects another cell, that new DNA can get incorporated into the bacteria itself, and in doing so, it can produce new characteristics. So that's generalized transduction. Specialized transduction occurs when we are um, using bacteriophages to cleave specific regions of our DNA, of the bacteria's DNA, so that we can then incorporate certain characteristics in special bacteria. The last um, process is conjugation. So pon conjugation is the transfer of DNA from one bacterial cell to another using a structure called a, a sex pilus. Um, so to do this, one bacteria has to have an F plasmid or a fertility plasmid. Um, once you have that fertility plasmid in one cell, you can then produce the F pilus or the sex pilus, right? Um, the plasmid is then replicated and then is the new, the new replicated plasmid moves into the new cell and we now have two cells that are both F positive. So here we have an F plus and an F minus cell. Here's that sex pilus right there. Um, the plasmid gets replicated and the new replicated version moves into the cell over here. And once that happens, now we have two F plus cells. So this can occur within um, cells of the same type or in cells with different of different species. I'm going to stop here and we'll talk about our mobile gene pools in our last video. Bye.